still going strong at uh, TEDx Amsterdam in close cooperation with Sanoma Uitgevers. Next to me is Mr. Gary Carter. I enjoyed, between big brackets, your show. I always like being in the public listening to you. Because you, you always start and then at a sudden moment there's that twist. <laughs> I, I was watching the screen over there. There's a screen uh, with, with, it's a Twitter feed. And as you know, Dutch people are not so polite. So it, it, for the first 10 minutes of your speech, people were throwing rotten eggs and tomatoes. Who's that guy? What's he doing? He's, he's running a commercial. And then suddenly you gave that twist. Please explain. Uh, please explain um, how I made the twist or what the twist means. Well, I, I could summarize this with a very short question. What do people make average? Okay. So I... I suppose what I was trying to argue in my presentation that much of my professional life, much of the media that we're in, much of everyday life in contemporary society is constructed on the basis of shared demographic uh, uh, classification. So you and I are both white men and uh, she is a black woman who lives in Spain. and. And we construct society, we build markets on the basis of the size of those numbers. And the, the business that I'm in, mass media entertainment, is very, very good at that. It takes huge, huge amounts of information about its audience and it aggregates them in a way that makes the audience feel that they're having a collective but, but single experience. It touches them personally. But certain other kinds of people fall through the cracks of those classifications. Yeah. And one of them is my son, who not only is half Albanian, half South American, not only is autistic and has profound cognitive problems, has a whole succession of things, all the way down to the fact that he has a, a pacemaker. And for him... He's unique. He's unique. But his niche is so small that there is no economic market to support him. And so he is simultaneously denied choices. So as I put it in the context of, of the presentation, there are no television programs for my son. Mm -hmm. Before going, for, before elaborating further on your, your, your private life and your son and your son-father relationship, uh, do you think that for television there is an unserved audience? I think there are lots of unserved people who do not find themselves reflected in mass media. And that's because, as the word mass implies, it's aimed at masses. And even though you may fit into lots of categories, I'm willing to believe and have come to understand through my son that even apparently comfortable conforming people like yourself, I mean conforming to your demographics, may still have areas of unease. You may still have places in which you do not feel yourself to be fitting in in some way. And I have come to believe through my relationship with Lucio that this is as a result of the way we construct the world on the basis of averages and nobody is actually average. So Lucio changed your life? Absolutely. Profoundly? C completely. But, but can it be true, it's just an assumption, it's a hypothesis, that then since uh, Lucio uh, appeared in your life, that there is a bigger tension between your working life, which your job, you're the CCO of Fremantle, I think, Global? COO of Fremantle, yes. Yeah. So, uh, so you're making mass products mm. for, for large groups of people? And there comes Lucio and your life changes. Is there a big uh, tension between your private life and your professional life? Well, there are tensions between my yeah. private life and my professional life, as they are for everybody. I mean, you, you make accommodations across that, uh, across that tension. But if you're asking me, do I find it uncomfortable to be making mass entertainment, given what I just argued? No, not at all. Because what, what companies like, like mine do, or companies like Sanoma do, they generally do it extremely well. And, and the kinds of programs, the, a clip of which I showed, do transform the lives of people. And they do touch people in audiences, and they do make people understand that society is held together through a cohesiveness. Mm -hmm. What they don't do is serve invisible people. And I'm really making an argument for invisible people. Let me look at it a different way. In this country, it's possible if you have a disabled child that he has a leer verplicht und heffing. Okay? Right. So he does not have to go to school. Well, that's great. Except that it means that, as a society, we don't have to provide a school for my son. So he, in a sense, from a fundamentally, probably liberally argued position, 
he is denied an education because there is not a market big enough to step in and provide children like him with a school. And that's the tension I'm trying to point out. I'm not offering solutions, and I'm deeply proud of the industry that I work in, as I'm deeply proud of my son. I just worry about the way his choices have been denied him by contemporary society. Okay, another assumption, the last one. Uh, television industry, industry collapses. Yes. Totally. Yes. Within five years, yes. you're still a young man. Yes. What are you going to do? What, what are you going to do? Television industry is not going to collapse. Okay. That was okay. The assumption. That was the assumption. It's a false assumption. Okay. What will I be doing apart from working in the television business in a few years? Well, the television business will have changed. But I will certainly be helping the community of people and children in this town who have learning difficulties to provide choices, educational choices. And I'm afraid, I'm afraid I and that community will have to fight increasingly to get the educational choices of our children met, not because they are special, but because they are children. What makes you a good father to Lucio? I think I'm probably not a good father to Lucio in many, many ways, just as you are probably not a good father to your children if, you, if they have them. I think what makes me, what makes me the, a good father to the extent that I'm a good father is that through him, I have come to understand what it means to be human. Thank you. What is it? Thank you.